nothing can stop America when you get right down to it. And uh, it's been true all along. It may have been interrupted. Uh, one of the scariest of scenarios when you had a war with one group of states fighting another group of states. And it may have been tested again in the Great Depression, and it may be tested now to some degree. In 1929, my dad, who was 26 years of age then, uh, was employed as a security salesman by a, a local small bank. And uh, he sold stocks and bonds, but he mostly he sold stocks. And when stocks fall 48%, and you were selling them to people a few months ago, uh, you really don't feel like going out and facing those same people. So I think my dad uh, probably I like to do as they say now, shelter in place, which means stay at home. And uh, uh, there really wasn't that much in our house. Uh, we, we just had a small yard. It was wintertime anyway. My dad wouldn't have been puttering around the yard anyway. And there really wasn't, you know, Television wasn't there, and, and, uh, 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 and he and my mother got along very well. So under those conditions, uh, if you'll turn to the next slide, uh, I was uh, born about nine months later. So, at, uh, But at that time, uh, I was actually born on August 30th, but the stock market was closed that day, and so I'm using the previous day's figures. But the... It wasn't, uh, I didn't notice at the time that the market was closed, but the stock market had actually recovered over 20% during that nine and a half month period or thereabouts. Uh, people did not think in the fall of 1930, they did not think they were in the Great, uh, a Great Depression. They thought it was a recession very much like had occurred at least a dozen times, although not always when stock markets were important. But then we'd had many recessions in the uh, in the United States over the time, and this did not look like it was something dramatically out of the or ordinary. But, uh, uh, but and for a while, actually for about ten days after my birth, uh, that view held on, and. Uh, uh, the stock market actually managed to go up all of one or two percent there at, uh, in those ten days. But that's the last day. Uh, well, from that point, if you'll turn to the next slide, the uh, stock market went from a level of 240 to 241, which was a noticeable decline because. Uh, if somebody had given me $1,000 on the day I was born and I'd bought stocks with it and bought the Dow average, my $1,000 would have become $170 in, in less than two years. And that is something that none of us here ever experienced that uh, uh, we may have had it with one stock occasionally, but, but in terms of uh, having a broad range of America marked down 83% in two years and marked down 89% of the peak, it was in September 3rd, 1929, uh, was extraordinary. And um, in that intervening period, less than one year after I was born, just slightly less than one year, my dad went to the bank where he worked and had his account, and of course, the bank had a sign on it closed, and uh, so he had no job. And uh, he had two kids at that point, and uh, his father had a grocery store, but uh, Charlie and I both worked for my grandfather. Charlie worked there in 1940, I worked there in 1941, so we didn't know each other, but. But my grandfather said to my father that uh, don't worry about your groceries. 
Howard, he says, I'll just let your bill run. <laughs> that was, my grandfather was not exactly. Uh, he, he was, he cared about his family, but he wasn't going to go crazy. Uh, and uh, uh, one of the things as I look back on that period, as I, and I don't think the economists generally like to give it that much of a point of importance, but, but if we'd had the FDIC, 10 years earlier, we, the FDIC started on January 1st, 1934. It was part of the sweeping legislation that took place when Roosevelt came in. But if we'd had the FDIC, uh, we would have had a much, much different experience, I believe, in the, in the Great Depression. People blame it on smooth, smooth haul here. And they, I mean, they, they, uh, there's all kinds of things and, and the margin requirements in 29 and all of those things entered into creating a recession. But if you have over 4,000 banks fail, that's 4,000 local experiences where people save and save and save put their money away and then someday they reach for it and it's gone uh, and that happens you know in all 48 states and it happens to your neighbors and it happens to your relatives uh, it it has to have an effect on the psyche that's incredible so it, uh, one very 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 good thing that came out of the depression in my view uh, is the FDIC, and uh, uh, it would have been a somewhat different world, I'm sure, if the bank failures hadn't just rolled across this country, and and uh, and uh, with people that thought that they were savers, found out that they had nothing uh, when they went there, and there was a sign that said closed. Uh, incidentally, the FDIC. Uh, I think very few people know this, but, uh, or at least they don't appreciate it, but, but the FDIC has not cost the American taxpayer a dime. I mean, its expenses have been paid, its losses have been paid, all through assessments on banks. It's been a mutual insurance company of the banks backed by the federal government and associated with the federal government. But now it holds $100 billion, and that consists of premiums that were paid in and investment income on the premiums, less the expenses and paying of all the losses. And think of the incredible amount of peace of mind that's, got, that's given to people that were not uh, uh, similarly uh, uh, situated in, in when the Great Depression hit. So the Great Depression went on and um, it lasted a very long time, but it lasted a lot longer in the minds of people than it did actually in its effects. World War II came along and on sort of an involuntary manner, we adopted Keynesianism. We started running fiscal deficits, of course, that were absolutely huge and took our debt up to a percentage of GDP, which we've never reached, had never reached before, and never have reached since. Uh, so we had an enormous economic recovery, but the minds of people had been so scarred, the memories. Parents told their children, 1929 became a symbol in people's minds. I mean, if you said 1929, it was like saying 1776 or 1492. I mean, everybody knew exactly what you were talking about. And it affected stock prices in a rather remarkable way to the point, if you'll change to the next slide, it was January 4th of 1951 
that the kid who was born on August 30th in 1930 had finished college before the stock market got back to where it was uh, at that earlier time. So take the years from 1920, 1930, or 1929, really, to 19. 51, or take the year from my birth, 20 years, and bear in mind that, uh, you know, the country was only 140 years old when this started. That, that's 20 years out of a, this amazing 231-year lifetime of our country that uh, was flat out, you know, a time of, for a long time, of no economic growth and no feeling by people in terms about the wealth of the country, the, about what the American economy was worth, what all these corporations that were doing far, far, far better than they were long ago. But it took all of that time to restore uh, in the market a price level uh, that was equal to uh, what it was when I was born 20 years earlier. So. Uh, if you think about the fact that we're enduring a few months, and we'll endure some many more months, but uh, and we don't know how it comes out, and people in the 30s didn't know how it was going to come out, but they endured, persevered, prospered, and uh, uh, the American miracle uh, continued. But it's interesting in that. Uh, I actually don't have a slide for the next one because last night I was thinking after all the slides had been prepared, I was actually thinking about this a little later, a little bit, and I remembered that uh, um, in 19, at the start of 1954, the stock market was, the Dow was only at about 280. Uh, and I remember 1954 because it was the best year I ever had in the stock market. And uh, uh, the Dow went from essentially, uh, uh, what, two, 280 or thereabouts at the start of the year to a little over 400 at the end of the year. And when it went to 400, as soon as it went across 381, that famous figure from 1929, when it went to 400, uh, and this will be hard for some of you to believe, but everybody wondered, is this 1929 all over again? And that seems a little far-fetched because it was a different country in 1954, but that was the common question and it actually achieved uh, it, it, it was, you know, it, it achieved such uh, a level of worry about whether we were about to jump off another cliff just because the 381 of 1929 had been succeeded, <clears throat> exceeded, that they held Senator Fulbright, Bill Fulbright of Arkansas, who became very famous later in terms of the Foreign Relations Committee, but he headed the Senate Banking Committee. And he called a special, uh, for a special investigation, and he called it the, uh, what do you call it, the stock market study. But it really, as you, if you read through it, he really was questioning whether we had built another house of cards again. And on his committee, it's interesting to see the Senate Finance Committee, uh, one of the members was, uh, Prescott Bush, the uh, the father of George H. W. Bush, and grandfather of George W. Bush, uh, uh, and had some illustrious names. And his committee, in March of 1955, with the Dow at 405, assembled 20 of the best minds in the United States to testify as to whether we were going crazy again because the market was at 400, the Dow was at 400, and we'd gotten in this incredible trouble before, but that was the mindset of the country, it's incredible. Uh, we didn't really believe America was 
what it was. And my boss, the reason I'm familiar with this thousand page book that I have here, <laughs> I found it last night uh, in the library, and everything, uh, was that I was working in New York for one of the 20 people that was called down to testify before Senator Fulbright. And he testified right before Bill Martin, who was running the Federal Reserve, testified, and right after General Wood, who was running Sears, uh, testified Sears was very, very important then. And, and Bill Martin, of course, is the fellow that longest running chairman in the history of the Fed, and he's the one that gave the famous quote about the function of the Fed was to take away the punch balls just when uh, the party started to get really warmed up. Uh, but Ben Graham, my boss, sent me over to the public library in New York and to gather some information for him. Something you could do in five minutes with a computer now, and I dug out something, and he went to testify. And uh, on page 545 of this book, I knew where to look, I didn't have to go through it all, but he uh, had a, the quote which I remember, and I remember because Ben Graham was the one of the three smartest people I've met in my life, and he was the dean of people in securities business. He wrote the classic security analysis book in 1934. He wrote the book that changed my life, The Intelligent Investor, in 1949. He was unbelievably smart. And when he testified with the Dow at 404, he had one line in there right toward the start in, in his written testimony. And he said, the stock market is high, it looks high, it is high, but it's not as high as it looks. But he said, it is high. And since that time, if we'll turn to the next slide, of course, we felt the American tailwind at full force and, and the Dow, well, let's see, we, uh, yeah, when the Dow was, went down Friday, but, it, but when we made the slide, it was about 24,000. So uh, you're looking at a market today that has produced $100 for every dollar. All you did had, was had to believe in America and just buy a cross section of America. You didn't. You didn't have to read the Wall Street Journal. You didn't have to look up the price of your stock. You didn't have to pay a lot of money in fees to anybody. You just had to believe that the miracle was intact. But you'd had this testing period between 1929 and, and uh, well, really, uh, certainly 1954 is indicated by what happened when it got back up to 380. You had this testing period. and. Uh, uh, people really, they'd lost faith to some degree. They just didn't see the potential of what America could do. And we found that, uh, that uh, nothing can stop America when you get right down to it. And uh, it's been true all along. It may have been interrupted uh, with the scariest of scenarios when you had a war with one group of states fighting another group of states and it may have been tested again in the Great Depression and it may be tested now to some degree but in the end the answer is never bet against America and uh, uh, that in my view is as true today as it was in 1789, and even was true at the during the Civil War and the depths of the.